Okay, uh, this week we're going to learn how to use the grid to copy a drawing or to enlarge the drawing as it is in this case. You can see the original in my drawing there on the right. I'm going to start off with this Xerox printed out copy of a of a drawing by an artist named uh, Egon Schiele. And I'll talk a little bit about Schiele later in the video, but you can see it's just a regular piece of paper. You could use a magazine page or even a drawing that you make yourself that you want to uh, you know, be able to copy it bigger. So if you draw something really small, like a thumbnail, then you can scale it up using this method. So you don't have to have a, a a copy or anything. You will need a ruler though, so if you if you don't have a ruler, this is how you make one. Just take a piece of paper, fold it up so it's a little bit stiffer, and then what you're gonna do is just take your original image and mark the edges of it and then mark that in half and then into quarters and into eighths if you need to. And what that does is it gives you fractions of the image that you're using. You don't really know what those are. It could be fractions of an inch or whatever, but all you know is that the ratio is the same for your picture that you're using, and that'll allow you to scale up. So even if you don't have a ruler, you can still do this. A lot of times I find that if I'm measuring a piece of artwork or something I'm trying to build, I don't really care so much what the standard size is of that thing. I just need to know that it goes from there to there. So I find that measuring things with a piece of paper um, is just as effective most of the time than measuring them standardly. But I am going to use a ruler for this. So you can see I'm going to make a little grid there. And I'm making one inch squares on this. It's a six by four image by inches. And then I'm going to double that for the drawing on the paper. I'm sitting here again, looking back at this video I made a couple days ago, and this time I've got the electric guitar. I plugged into a lot of reverb going through that amp. So basically, you just make a grid. I made it in pen just so you can see it in the video a little bit better but uh, honestly you can draw this really light so you don't ruin anything or you can erase it later you do have to put that grid over the top of the image so I wouldn't use anything that you you know really care about I wouldn't do it with family photos or anything unless you can make a copy of it so I'm just laying out the size of the drawing I want to make. This is just going to be a copy basically. I'm not trying to do anything real creative with it, but this technique you can use to scale up anything. And you can scale it up to really big sizes. I'm just going to double it, but if you tripled it or quadrupled it or went even beyond that, you could take something small like this and you know turn it into a wall size mural and honestly that's the way that it's done in a lot of cases so speed up the video here but I'm gonna do this every two inches I'm gonna make a mark so my squares will be twice the size take a little bit of time to set this up. It took me about five minutes to make the grid and measure everything out. I'm just going to attach that there so you can see it in the video a little bit better. Now the grid that I made on the right is even a little bit dark just so that you can see it in the video. I, I would make that very light and make it easier to erase later. Now square by square what you do 
is you just go through and say, okay, where does the edge of that hat actually leave and enter that particular square? So you see what I'm doing is I'm actually drawing that path of that little edge. It's good to kind of go around the outside of a picture like this. And what you'll see me do over and over again is kind of go back to that original Xerox and kind of just trace over with my pencil a little bit. And what that allows me to do is kind of get my hand in the feel of what the mark I'm going to be making is. The grid is really great at getting the baseline proportions really close. I would say I wouldn't say correct because you're still going to have to fix things here and there, but it's much much faster and more successful, especially if you're a beginning artist, uh, to lay it out square by square and just plan those individual little blocks rather than trying to go through the entire picture and get the face and the hat and the right ear and the clothing and everything in the right place. There's just so many things, so many opportunities for it to go wrong. And I've seen it over and over again with students. They just draw the eye over and over and over again because it doesn't look right. But the grid can help you get the eye in the right place so that you can be successful with more parts of the picture. So you see what I'm doing is just kind of going around the chin and making really light marks to establish where the jawline is, where the cheekbone is, so that when I start putting the lips and the nose and the eye and everything in the place, it's kind of already got something to go into. Now it should be said that the grid is not going to teach you how to draw. You still have to fill it in and be able to make an ear and a nose and lips and eyebrows and eyelids, all of that stuff but it can help get the proportions in the right spot so that when you do um, have those problems with those individual features, then it's just a lot easier to go through and fix them because you only have to move them slightly. It just gives you less to construct in the picture. So after there's kind of an outline there, you see how to speed the video up here. And this is sped up about a thousand percent. It did really take me over an hour to get this drawing kind of in there. And I take a lot more time in the beginning. Just trying to get everything in the right place, get the curve of that headwear, that hat, that woolen hat. Starting on the nose and the mustache there, and still going back to that original picture just to reference. But I just take note of where the nose is and where the lips are. And with the grid there, it's really easy to kind of measure them out and plan and go back. You don't have to do this with a portrait. This will work for anything. Architecture, anything that's really complex, you know, landscapes, um, something that's got too many parts to really put together. And what you'll see in the end is that I really, I do get the proportions pretty close, but the expression on this person's face 
uh, is is just not the same in Sheila's uh, painting as it is with uh, mine. My his is a uh, is more awake. My person ends up looking kind of sleepy. It should be said that Sheila painted this in 1915. And this uh, picture is a picture of a Russian soldier from World War I, a prisoner of war. So the look on his face is like shell shock, vigilance, um, you know, worry, uh, sleeplessness. And, and mine is the opposite. It ends up being kind of sleepy, so just a little bit of the eye there. There you can see a book page of uh, Sheila's original drawing and painting. He's a fantastic artist. Uh, he's also a very controversial figure. Um, and you can see his uh, the, the figures and the hands that he makes are always filled with tension. There's always something kind of serious going on. They're very alive, even though they're not realistic in, in any way, really, but they are. They do seem to be living and always twitching. If, if you want to learn how to draw hands, um, then Sheila is like the, the best artist, I think. And the thing that's amazing to me about Sheila's work is that it, it might as well have been made yesterday for how current. Um, it looks, even though it's over a hundred years ago at this point. And I can see just filling this in, having looked at that book, just told me that I was being too careful. I was using the tip of the pencil too much, so you can see I changed to the side just to loosen it up. This is just made a lot easier by having that grid in there. I don't have to worry about putting anything in the right place. I can just fill it in. And again, this is at a thousand percent. So this last section that you're looking at here is probably about 45 minutes. I'm not going back for proportions anymore now. I'm trying to figure out how dark should the, the hat be. It's kind of funny that Sheila's Russian soldier from 1915, my drawing ends up looking like a, a snowboarder from 2020. sportswear model or something like that. He's got that nonchalant kind of sleepy look on his face. The soldier hasn't eaten properly for years. Uh, my guy looks like he's, you know, just had some avocado toast or something. <laughs> Once again, it's just a number two pencil, so I'm not really getting the darkness that I would with a softer lead. But you can see in the final picture, I'll, I'll put it up at the end of the video, that uh, I can get some good contrast out of it. It's just there's a lot of glare coming off of the graphite in the camera shot. If you have the desire to make good portraits, this is a great way to start because it just gets you through those initial measuring processes uh, much faster so that you can get to the real stuff like shape of the nose, size of the eyes, expression, 
all those other things. Eventually, I probably wouldn't use it anymore after lots of practice, but it's a really great tool for scaling things up or just for learning in the beginning. back in with the eraser and clean it up a little bit, add some highlights. So there you can see how the making a one inch grid to a two inch grid doubles the size of the drawing and keeps a lot of it you know, pretty accurate. So there's with the original enlarged so you can see size wise it, everything ended up in the same place but it's just the eyes are a little bit more closed in mine and expression ends up different. <laughs> 